Hello, this recording is for all of my junior level students. I'm going to be going over what we're doing the second week of school. And I do apologize for my streaming quality today. I'm not at home and I'm not using the usual hardware. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, if you go to the Canvas homepage, especially if you're working from home, this is a good place to start. Uh, if you go to modules, we're going to continue our work on module one. If you were with us last week, Okay, you should have been able to finish all five of these little pretests that we did. And this week, starting with 1.1.6a, uh, we're going to learn about mythology and its role in storytelling. So I lied. You actually want to start at 1.1.6, and it's going to be a bit of a refresher lesson from some of you from freshman year. Okay, if you remember during your freshman year of school, you learned about mythology and the role of mythology. And in case you forgot, I included a little extra for you to kind of refresh your memory. Now you'll see a video from Crash Course, and you'll also see a file. There it is. Okay, this is just a, a note that you can take along with the video. I'm not going to be collecting this for homework. Um, in our classroom, we're not even going to give a lot of time to this. However, if you feel that you're struggling with understanding the role of mythology, uh, these resources will help you. It might be extra work, but it might be just what you need. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to learn about First Nation mythology. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about the Zuni tribe. Uh, their origins are, you know, in the New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado area. Uh, their homes are distinguished by these ancient pueblos they used to live in. And I'll go ahead and read this word for word. As with most American Indian people, the Spaniards were among the first recorded as making contact with the Zuni. In 1539, a Spanish expedition party led by Moorish slave uh, Estevancio encountered the Zuni and they killed him. In 1540, Francisco Vasquez Coronado led a military expedition into New Mexico where a major battle between the Zuni and the Spaniards took place. The Zunis almost won the battle, which lasted from January until March. Finally, the Spaniards gained control and massacred Zuni men, women, and children. In 1598, Juan de Onate, a Spanish governor of New Mexico, made his first visit to the Zuni lands in the 1629, or in 1629, a Catholic missionary was established at Hawakiku. In 1680, the Zunis revolted and burned the mission and built a village and strengthened its defenses against another attack from the Spanish. Then the 1692 Don Diego de Vargas reconquered New Mexico, after which the Zunis settled all their villages into one area. After the Mexican-American War, which lasted from 1846 to 1848, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which I think many of you guys have learned about or will learn about this year, was signed, which made New Mexico and the Zunis part of the United States. Uh, in 1990, President Bush signed into a public law entitling the Zuni Land Conservation Act that was designed to settle Zuni claims against the United States for damages to Zuni trust lands. The Zuni received a cash settlement for their lost territory. Today, the Zuni have both a government and a tribal council to serve the Pueblo. The Zuni hold their educational programs is very important for the development of their children. They also have enterprises such as Zuni Technologies and Zuni Skies Unlimited Enterprises, which provides cell phone service to Arizona. In addition, there's also the Zuni Entrepreneurial Enterprises, the Z, which provides vocational training and, employ and, <laughs> and employment opportunities and independent living skills for developmentally disabled adults within the Zuni Reservation and elsewhere in the Southern McKinley County. There are also many local businesses and tribal programs which serve the Zuni community. It is their strong cultural and communal bonds that have kept and continued to keep them strong as people. So I would like for you guys to watch this video just to get a better idea as to how this uh, tribe lives today. And it's not too long, um, but you can just go ahead and watch it here. Let me move Mike up a little bit so I can click next. <laughs> and so just as we refreshed our knowledge on, or just as we learned about the Zuni culture, I want you guys to do the same thing again. Uh, this has been happening to me all day. Um, I'm just going to roll with it. Uh, what should pop up here are two things, a video and 
more notes. Again, I'm not collecting these. And if I had you as a freshman, this should look familiar to you. This is my Greek mythology uh, lecture. So you can flip through the slides of the slides presentation and you can take the notes and it'll help you. Okay, uh, we're also going to have a comma crash course. Okay, I have uh, presentations here, which are taking forever to pop up. Maybe I should have waited to do this at home. My internet's a lot faster. <laughs> I'm just going to skip ahead here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you guys a lecture this week on comma rules. Uh, just to refresh our brains as to when it's appropriate to use commas. Uh, so if you are learning from home, just flip through the presentation and read the notes closely. There's also a worksheet down here that you can work on and turn into me if you feel like you need some extra help. No, this isn't going to be put into the grade book, but it's there if you need the extra resource. So this is going to look different depending on what class you're in. But essentially, all classes will be doing the same thing. Uh, we're going to read two stories. Uh, one is Orpheus and Eurydice, which is an ancient Greek myth. And the other one is called the Spirit Wife, which is a very similar uh, Zuni myth. Okay. And what you're going to do is you are going to write a compare and contrast essay that looks at the similarities and the differences between these two similar works. And... You know, whether you're in my honors class or if you're in my uh, Eng English 11 class, uh, you'll see that there are these boxes here. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to make notes kind of like you would do with a Venn diagram with the circles that like to overlap. What you're going to do is you're going to make a list of bullet points identifying what makes the spirit wife different, what makes Orpheus and Eurydice different, and then in the middle here you'll tell me what similarities the two stories have together. Uh, you'll also scroll down, and unless you're in my honors class, there's going to be a graphic organizer here to help you with writing the short essay. And uh, if you are in my uh, honors class, uh, I'm going to be expecting you to write this essay using the MLA format style. If you have any questions about that, check out my research page on Canvas, or you can send me an email and ask me, and I'd love to help you out. So, you can find these two short stories by clicking next. And I would like for you to annotate these as well. So the first one we're going to read is called The Spirit Wife. Okay, this is an ancient Zuni mythology. And the purpose for reading question up here at the top, ask what does this myth teach us? And spoiler alert, this is going to be the exact same purpose for reading question that I have you use for Orpheus and Eurydice. So what that means, here, let me go ahead and make a copy of this. What that means is that you pretty much just need to copy and paste that question oops, right here. And the reason why, you know, I could just put in the purpose for reading question right there in the box for you uh, to cut out an unnecessary step. But I think the step is necessary because it's important that we read and think critically about the purpose for reading question so it floats around in our brains better as we go through and we annotate the story. So as you're annotating, make sure that you tag the story, okay? Because this is an old myth, it doesn't have an author. So get as much of the tag as you can. Okay, what is the title and what's the genre? If you're choosing to do this online, I want you to highlight main ideas. If you're choosing to do this in person, you can underline or borrow one of my highlighters in class. Okay, I want you to leave at least five comments in the side margin. I want you to circle words that are confusing to you, or you can underline them uh, if you're doing this on Canvas. And um, I want you to complete the purpose for reading question down at the box at the bottom. So remember, the purpose for reading question, what does this myth teach us? When you're finished reading, you should be able to answer that in the space provided. And then you're going to do it again, because remember, we're comparing and contrasting two different stories here. So if you click Next, you'll find the second story at 1.1.7b, Orpheus and Eurydice, and for some reason, uh, my internet has just been giving me issues today. So you can't really see this, but it's the same question. What does this myth teach us? And you'll answer the purpose for reading question at the bottom of the page, just like what we did with the spirit wife. 
okay? If your Canvas pages are giving you this much trouble like it's giving me today, I've never seen this happen before, I don't know why, uh, just reach out to me and I will send you the link directly. Now, at the end of this module, there's going to be a short reflection. All right, this isn't due for a while. Uh, but what I want you to do is to think about why is it important to study mythology. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a minute to think about the question. I want you to answer the prompt. And I want you to respond to at least one of your classmates' posts. And if you're not quite sure what you can write, I included a few sentence frames here that can help you. And you'll see that this is just a regular discussion board, and you'll fill it out appropriately. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for walking. Walking. Thank you so much for walking to your computer and paying attention to me. Thank you so much for watching also. Uh, have a good week. I look forward to learning with you. Take care of yourselves. And goodbye. Goodbye.